All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the culmination of our real number adventure. Today we'll actually prove the least upper bound property so you'll see why cuts are so important. They make this proof incredibly elegant and you'll see why, so enjoy the ride. So again, what does the least upper bound property say? It says that if you have a set of real numbers that's bounded from above, then it has a least upper bound. And convince yourself that what I'm gonna say now is actually the same thing. So LUV property. So if a beautiful S, or let's just call it a zeta is, um, a non-empty set of cuts, so is a non-empty set or collection of cuts, I think cuts are real numbers, that is bounded above, then that collection has the least upper bound. Again, if you have a non-empty set of real numbers that is bounded above, then that set has the least upper bound. And the question is, how can we construct that least upper bound, and then again, it's quite elegant. So here, for instance, you have a cut, so this is a cut S, and here you have another cut in the family S, and then maybe here another cut in the family. So this whole collection, we call this S. The question is, how can you find the um, least upper bound? Very easy, just take the union of all this, so M, it's just this union, this union, this, and usually, you know, infinite union. So we call this M. In other words, let M be the union of all the S's. So let M be the union of all the things. What does that mean? So what does it mean for a rational number to be an M? It means R is in at least one of the sets. So uh, M is a set of rational numbers such that R is in S for some um, cut in our collection. And I'm claiming that M is actually our least upper bound, so that would solve the problem. So what do we have to show? We first of all have to show that M is a real number, that it's a cut. We have to show that it is an upper bound, and we have to show it's the least upper bound. So, claim M is our least upper bound. So first of all, what we have to show is that M is a cut. So what do we need to show? We need to show M is non-empty, it's not all of Q, it contains all the rational numbers before it, and it has no maximum. So quite a lot of work. But first of all, um, M is non-empty, that is clear because you see um, our, what's called, um, our cuts, they're non-empty and you're just taking the union of cuts. So you're just taking bigger and bigger sets. So if one of them is non-empty, the union is non-empty. That's not a problem. The fact that M is not the rational numbers, that's a little bit trickier. So what is going on? So you see, you have your sets S, okay, something like this. Okay. And we know that they're bounded above by a set B. Okay, so let B be that upper bound. Okay. Okay. 
So, and basically what is happening, the idea is, every set is contained in B, so if you take the union, it's still contained in B. So if you take the union M, it's still contained in B, but look, B is an upper bound, so it's not infinity, so it's not all the rational numbers, and therefore M is not all the rational numbers. So let's just formalize this. So what's called? So let B be any upper bound for that beautiful set. By the way, if you understand this argument, the, the last part is also easy. So let B be any upper bound. For this set S, okay, then What does that mean? So by definition of upper bound, it means for all S in S, S is less than or equal to B, which I would like to remind you, this is the same thing as saying S is a subset of B by definition of a set of less than or equal. And so in particular, if every S is in B, you can just take the union, but then, then M, which is just a union of S, it's still included in B. So M is included in B, so in other words, um, M is less than or equal to B. But in particular, uh, M cannot, because essentially B is finite, M cannot be all of Q. But since B is not all of Q, so in other words, like B, it's a strict subset of Q. So if, if the bigger thing is not all of Q, it also follows that M is not all of Q. You see, because um, M is less than or equal to B, which is strictly less than Q, if you'd like. Um, okay, so that's one thing I know. It's a, a long argument for something that, that should be easy to prove. And now let's show the second property of cuts. So suppose you have some S in M. So suppose S is in M and uh, some real number is less than s, uh, sorry, some rational number is less than s, then because s is in m, we know that s is in one of the sets s, so because s is in s for some s in our collection, okay, that's by definition of m, and in particular, you see S itself is a cut. So we already know that R is in uh, S. So since, since S is in S and R is less than S, we get R is in S since S is a cut. But here's the thing, S is a subset of M. You see, this was S, and then M is just a union, so it's definitely bigger. So in particular, R is in S, but therefore, also, it is in M. So, R is in M, and that's what we wanted to show. If you have some element in M and some smaller rational number, then that rational number is also in M. Last but not least, we have to show that the bigger thing. So we have to show that there's no maximum. So suppose, again, R is in M. Well, but then, by definition, R is in S for some S in M. Uh, sorry, for some S in uh, our collection. 
But then, because S is a cut, there is, what's called, there is a S in S that is bigger than uh, R. Again, this property or cut, so if you have R in S, then you can find some S that's bigger than it. Okay, so there is S in S with S is bigger than R, but look, S is a subset of M. So this is S, again, this is M. Thing. So in particular, what do we have? We have that there is S in M such that this is true. So there is S in M. Again, the exact same one uh, such that S is greater than R. And that's precisely what we wanted to show. We assume R is an M, and we found a bigger element in M. Therefore, this is true, and then, uh, then so therefore, we, we're done with this part. We have that M is a cut. Okay, now that we've shown that it's a cut, we just need to show that M is an upper bound, and lastly, that it's a least upper bound. But the good news is, Kind of the hard part is done. The rest you'll see are much easier. So step two, M is an upper bound for S that is show for all S in your family and S is less than or equal to M. In other words, S is included of in M but notice, that is just by definition of union. In other words, what is M? So we have this set S, another set S, another set S. Well, M by definition is just everything put together. So you see, sorry, that's M. No matter which S we pick, it's always contained in the union, but by definition of M being the union of S, uh, we get S is included in M for all S in S. See how elegant it is? Simply as defining M to be kind of the biggest sort of union in some sense of all the S's, we automatically get that M is an upper bound. And the nice thing is, the last part is also very elegant. And it's actually very similar to the proof that uh, M is not all of Q. So step three. Uh, M is the least upper bound, so M is the least upper bound of that set S. What do we need to show? We just need to show it's smaller than any other upper bound. So let M1 be any other upper bound bound for S, that is, for all elements in the family, so for all sets in our family, uh, M1, so um, S is less than or equal to M1. So in other words, S is included in M1. But then what is going on in this case? We have, again, our sets here. Let me draw this again. So we have this S. Da, 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 da. We have this S that's a bit bigger, and then this S that's a little bit smaller. We know that they're all bounded above by this number M1. That's M1, that's M1, and that's M1. But in particular, what does that mean? It means if you take the union of all these things, it's still bounded above by M1. So then if you take M, 
which is just a union, it's still bounded above by m1. But you see, in particular, m is less than or equal to m1, which is what we need. But what's the idea? Since Since, again, S is included in M1 for Rs, if you take the union of S, it's still included in M1, but that's just M. And therefore, that's interesting, we get M is included in M1, and that implies M is less than or equal to M1, which really means that m is the smallest upper bound. We just had that given any upper bound m1, m is smaller than that. So indeed, uh, m is the least upper bound. So m is really the soup of our collection of sets. And therefore, m exists. You see how elegant this was. Really beautiful. And this concludes our real number adventure. So for our next adventure, we'll talk about sequences. Thank you.